Welcome to worship at El Pueblito United Methodist Church in Taos. Today, I'm delighted to welcome my friend and colleague, Reverend Scott Sharp. Scott has a unique role in the New Mexico Annual Conference, and he's going to tell us a little bit about that and bring us today's message. Welcome, Scott. Hey, Sherry, thank you so much for allowing me to be with you. And I'm so excited about being in worship on Sunday in Taos at El Pueblito, but I'm so excited to be able to do this too. My role today uh, is through the Texas Methodist Foundation. And I serve as the New Mexico area representative, which means I get to work with every church in our conference. And what's really cool about that is that I get to see how every church is expressing its ministry in such different ways. And El Poblito has over the years just done so much for that community in terms of worship and the shared table and just a presence for justice and love and hope. And I am just honored that you would trust TMF with some of the funds that help El Poblito and to help shared table do its ministry. So on your behalf, we steward those funds we invest them, we manage them, and we help make help them make more money so that you can do more ministry. You know, TMF is really about the mission of the church. In fact, our president, Tom Locke, you know, realized several years ago that it was very likely that at some point TMF is gonna be a billion dollar agency. But if the church has declined in all that, then we will have missed our mark. So in addition to all the ways in which we manage funds for people, we invest funds, we, you know, watch those portfolios so that you can, you know, sort of use as you can, you know, use your money in the best way to make more funds, to do more ministry. We also work with congregations in about what, what's your purpose? What's your reason for being? How can you focus most specifically on the ministry of a local congregation? And I have the joy and the privilege of being in part of all of that. So I'm really uh, honored that you would trust us with your funds. And I I'm extremely privileged to be able to be with you on a Sunday morning and on a, you know, on a virtual worship too. So TMF does a lot. You know, we range from money management to loans to, uh, you know, dealing with people in terms of helping them invest but we also do a lot with purpose. So that's kind of the spectrum of who we are. And in the middle of all of that, in the midst of all of that, we encourage people to stay headed to that true north that God calls each congregation to. And sometimes that takes a lot of courage. And so we work on courage, we work on purpose, we work on tenacity, we work on resilience, and we work on just what it means to be a loving congregation in the context in which you're planted. And, you know, I don't know, I don't know if there are many other churches that are a better example of that than El Poblito. So, you know, having said all that, um, I'm also having the honor of sort of offering you a devotion today, a little uh, a semi sermon. So I want to share with you just a little bit about a project that I'm working on at TMF that's called the Courageous Congregations Collaborative. And in that, we're working on five muscles. So if you think about what it means like for when you stretch a muscle or exercise, or just when you get out of a chair, when you do anything, you work muscles. And maybe when we're younger, we work them a little more strenuously. And as we age, we kind of move into chair yoga, or we just, you know, try to make sure everything's kind of still working. But these five muscles are really important. And they're important to me for a couple of reasons. One is because if you remember the story from Ezekiel, remember in Ezekiel 37, and the prophet Ezekiel is invited by God to go out into this valley, and he looks out over this vast expanse, and it's filled with bones. And God says, what do you see? It's like, well, I see a lot of bones. And God asks Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, only you know, God, only you know. And then, the, and then God invites Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones, and he does, and the bones come together. And then he says, 
prophesy again and the sinews come together and then they breathe into these bones and they become and they stand and it's just one of the most amazing stories in the Hebrew Bible. But part of what we're doing in this sort of post-pandemic church is wondering what muscles need to lay upon the bones of what we knew and what can be to give us that exercisable strength of being a vital congregation. And I don't have a lot of time with you today, but I want to share five muscles. And if you want to more know more about this, then I just let me know. And I'm happy to talk with you more about these, expand them a little bit more, explore them a little bit more. But for, day, for today, let's keep it a little simple. The first muscle that we've named is grieving well. The last year and a half, two years has been so hard on everybody. And we all grieve, whether we're a five-year-old, whether we're a toddler, or whether we're 85, we have grieved in our lives. Now that's different from for each of us, but giving voice to grief is important. Offering a chance for us to acknowledge that we have grieved and there's something that has died inside is important for us. Because once we do that, once we make that acknowledgement and, and recognize that there's anger and remorse and resentment sometimes and all the things that come with, with grief, we can make that turn and move into hope. There's a great story in John 11 where, you know, Lazarus has died and Martha runs out to Jesus who is tarried in coming to, to be with them. And Martha says, if you had just been here, and she gives this, this emphatic grief. But then Jesus helps her identify the change that's necessary. Do you believe that I'm the resurrection and the life? And then as you remember the story, Lazarus is risen from the dead. And the story goes on. Grieving well is the first muscle that we as a congregation need to start to work on. And once we do that, once we name our grief, once we identify it, we can start to move out of that and live into hope that is the promise of the resurrection. The second muscle is discerning purpose. Discerning purpose, knowing what we're supposed to do, why we're supposed to do it, and how we're supposed to do it. And if you think about it, one of the great biblical stories about that is Jesus' own temptation in the desert. After he's baptized by John and he went to be baptized, not for the remission of sin, but to, to shed away every other option that was before him, right? He was going to be the son of God. He was going to live out God's mission for the kingdom of God. He put that all aside and he's driven into the desert by the spirit where he fasts for 40 days. And at the end of that, the tempter comes and says, if. Now, there's no bigger word that can attack purpose than if. And in that story, the tempter says, if you are the son of God. And the gospel writer says, but Jesus answered. So he responds to these questions about his purpose with scripture that identifies who he is and what he's about, and it keeps clarity about who he is. Now, one of the things about El Poblito is that you all have been focused on mission to that community for so long in such outstanding ways. What a gift that is as an example to other congregations, but as a gift to the community. But flexing that muscle of purpose reminds us that when we are in that zone, when we are in our purpose, we have strength that we just don't understand. It's the Holy Spirit. It is the gift of the 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 the, the cumulative strength of everyone going to our purpose. The third muscle is walking alongside. And Eugene Peterson writes in his paraphrase of the Bible, the message, he says in John 1, the word became flesh, or the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. And which is such a great way of talking about how Jesus came to be with us. When we talk about walking alongside, it's, it's understanding that we are neighbors and that we have neighbors and that when we live together and we understand who we are, we glean the best of one another. When someone knows me, when I know someone, 
we can share who we are and we can ask the question, what are you good at and what do you enjoy? And how do you become part of that? One of the pastors that uh, we've been able to interview about these muscles told the story of meeting a woman that lived in the neighborhood of his congregation. And many of her family lived with her. And he asked her, you know, what do you enjoy doing? She's like, well, I love to cook. And he's like, well, is it any good? <laughs> and she said, yeah, it's really good. And over the course of a year, that pastor invited that woman to start cooking for meetings at the church and opportunities started to rise. And she, she cooked for a, a group of community leaders that was meeting at that church. And she became the unofficial caterer for that church. And a year after they met, just on the porch of her house, because he was walking by and waved, that woman opened her own restaurant. It's just this great story about what it means to walk alongside somebody and get to know them just for the sake that they are a child of God, and so are you. So what would it be like if we stretched our muscle and strengthened our muscle of walking alongside all the people that are in our mission field in our neighborhood? Very near that muscle and sort of a radiant muscle in a physiological sort of way is the muscle of discerning or distributing power. Now, when we start talking about muscles, power is often a part of the conversation because what else do muscles do? They activate power, whether it's to lift something or to move us through space, no matter what, or to think or to talk or whatever it is. Muscles are inherently tied to power. But in the church, sometimes power is not exactly even. I say that as a, as a, as a clergy person who often is identified in a robe, in a stole, in, 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 in ordination, in, in all these titles and such. But do I always share power as equitably as possible? Have I always distributed power in the churches I've served in a way where everybody has voice? In our communities, when we engage with people in our ministry, do they have power? Do they have voice? Or is it us deciding what's best for people? Certainly over the last 18 months with the death of George Floyd and the death of other people and just the difficulty of the coronavirus, we have all had to question, where is power? Where is power located? And how might we distribute it in the most equitable way that the kingdom of God is most identifiable. That's a really tough muscle to work, but it's like, it's like you never want to skip leg day at the gym. You don't want to skip this muscle. Even though it's a tough conversation, it is an important and essential conversation. The fifth muscle, and the last one I'll leave you with, is expanding imagination. And for that, I would turn to the scripture lesson of Colossians 3.14. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Set your minds on things that are above. In other words, when Jesus talked about the kingdom of God, he asked people to imagine them. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. The kingdom of God is like a sower who went out to sow. The kingdom of God is like a man who found a treasure in a field, sold everything he had just so he could find this treasure. Imagination is such a gift. And that is one of the muscles that as we expand together in the most corporate and beautiful sense, we find commonality, we find uh, co corroboration, we find this beautiful sense of sharing more with one another for the sake of the kingdom of God. And I'll leave you with a great story that remind I'm always reminded of when I think of imagination. Back when I was a younger pastor, I used to work at camp a lot in the summers. This is back when I served in the Oklahoma conference. And we had a midwinter retreat. And it was kind of the last chance for high school seniors to come and say their sort of give their swan song because they would have been aged out for camp the next summer. 
And I remember this young woman, her name was Carol. She was a senior in high school. And it was her time to say her goodbyes. And she went to the mic and she said, I've been coming to camp since before I could remember because my, my dad is a pastor. So I've grown up at camp. She said, camp makes you believe. I think that's what church can do. When we strengthen and express that uh, muscle of expanding imagination, we offer hope in a way that nothing, no one else can in our world. So friends, you know, when you, I, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you. I do believe that somehow God is breathing into these bones, a new reality for the church. And I'm so excited about these muscles that are being laid upon it. And I hope that you'll have the opportunity to stretch and, and strengthen and grow them because your church is so important to the mission of the, of the larger church, where you are in Taos. El Poblito, the shared table. It means so much to me and so many to so many other people. So thank you and God bless you and amen to everyone. Thank you, Scott. We are enjoying you being with us. We're looking forward to learning more. And as Scott said, please join us on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock in the garden at El Poblito if you are in Taos this Sunday, September the 26th. And now I invite you to pray with me. Oh Lord of us all, may we be strengthened, maybe we willing to stretch into new ways. May your spirit revive us, encourage us, that we might build new muscles, strengthen the ones we have, so that we might be your church in this community, in northern New Mexico, where we love and serve others. And now, God, gather us into one as we say the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for stretching your muscles and making it possible through your gifts, your presence, your talent, your time to be loving service in Taos. You make that happen. Thanks for supporting El Poblito. You can donate online at elpoblitoumc.org or you can drop a check off at the church or mail a check in. Oh God, thank you for blessing the gifts that we offer to you, that they may be multiplied and used to express love so that all may know your grace. Amen. And now let us sing together with Claire, amen. Let it be. Mm -hmm. 